Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Cashing In with Carville for week one of the NFL season. James, where are you coming to us from today? I'm coming in from the Shelburne Hotel on St. Stephen's Green in Center City, Dublin, Ireland, where I'll be attending a Carville family reunion this Saturday in County Monaghan. It's going to be over 100 Carvilles there from England, Ireland, and the United States. <laughs> that, that is fantastic. I, I could have had 100 guesses and not guessed that one. There um, you go. <laughs> you, you, you'll show up just as well as, as uh, Northwestern did a couple of weeks ago there. Yeah, that, you're right. They beat Nebraska. And it was a pretty, pretty good game. Yeah, it Actually, was. It was a good game to start go, yeah. the season. Yeah. So let's get into some uh, let's get into some picks first. Uh, get your thoughts. We'll, we'll pull the bandaid off of Sunday night. Yeah. Um, LSU. Uh, honestly, I don't think anyone would say they played very well for three quarters, but obviously had a chance to win the game at the end. Uh, what were your impressions of Brian Kelly's debut? Uh, well, but like 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 most people, you had thirty nine scholarship athletes in January of this year. You had fifteen people coming in for the portal. So. Of course, we have to be better toward the end of the year than we were Sunday night. Having said that, they were Jaden Daniels. I thought was a was a bright spot, and you can't go much further than your quarterback. And looks like he could take us somewhere, but the quarterback can't get any further than the offensive line, which obviously we knew going into the year that was an issue, and it's still an issue. I, I mean that's that's my analysis of where we are, but I think I think we're going to win a national championship in the next four years. I, I, I think it'd be that fast. When when Jaden Daniels threw the touchdown pass uh, to to bring yep. LSU within one point as time expired, w were you hoping Brian Kelly would choose to go for two at that point, or were you happy with overtime? I was so happy with overtime and so like overcome. Just once they lined up. You know, it, it was just one of those moments. Uh, you know, in retrospect, you said, well, I should have gone for two. Uh, yeah, again, it's, it was a breakdown in the offensive line. Mm -hmm. I mean, that it's that easy. That's it, And we knew that going into the year. Now we just rec had some big recruit out of Neville, you know, and they're going to fix that. And I think they'll get better this year. And then they got, you know, a couple of three games that they can work on things. And – you know, once the last half of the schedule starts, well, the fecal matter engages the rotor blades. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's that's one way to put it. Uh, yeah. so, so anyway, that, that one's over. LSU plays at Southern or hosts Southern um, in Baton right. Rouge, of course, the Crosstown Battle. It, kind of a cool deal that the two schools finally get together on the football field. It is. And the backstory on this is that they they it's good for the state. The legislature really – they're going to play a Louisiana school every year because it's just the, the economics of it. You know, Southern will get as much money playing LSU as to get for every other game. You know, to some extent, McNeese, you know, or, or, or Northwestern or ULM, the, the same thing. And so they, they actually go to the legislature and – the legislature pressures LSU to play at least one in-state game a year. And this happens a lot in, in college football where the, these athletic departments with pretty low revenue, you know, play a, a, a SEC team and they get a big payday. I, I, I don't know over a period of time how, how good an idea that is, but for the payday, for that whatever that university is, it, it's a pretty good deal and that's for coming up a feature in a lot of states where if you want funding from the state legislature, then you got to play the team in my district. It's just one of these unknown, underappreciated things that lie to juxtaposition of sports and politics. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll see, uh, we'll see what happens. Obviously Southern probably outmatched on the field, uh, but it'll be a fun listen. Southern won their opener 86 to nothing over some school called Florida Memorial. So they're not without talent. And then the halftime no. show, of course, will be spectacular. <laughs> Yeah, and, and you, you know, you, you remember Troy? <laughs> sure. I do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, uh, remember Appalachian State in Michigan? I, I, I mean, and we don't have any, you know, obviously we have better, but, you know, better athletes in Southern, but we don't have anything to be cocky about. And I think, 
think Brian Kelly will have them ready. I, you know, I, I just think that we dug ourselves in a pretty good hole here the last couple of years, and I'm very confident that we're going to dig ourselves out of it and, and quicker than a lot of people think. But it's going to take, a, you know, some more portal transfers and a, and a recruiting class or two. Sure, sure. Well, let's get into the picks. A team that has no holes to dig out of anywhere is Alabama. Um, they are playing their first non-conference road game, James, since 2011. It's in Austin, Texas, uh, and they are laying 20 points against the Longhorns. Is that price too high for you? No. No. And, you know, he's he's going to have that team so ready and, you know, I probably saw because, you know, he's got he's getting – you know, Arch Manning, and he's getting some recruits, but he, he, he he's not ready. Good thing he's coming to the SEC in 2025 because he's. I don't think he's going to be ready in 2022. Um, so so we like Alabama over Texas. Moving on with the picks, we'll see if we can open up a few oysters and find some pearls in these picks. Um, Iowa State and Iowa, the Cy Hawk game, as it were, always a fun one. Iowa, James, won 7-3 to three last week with two safeties against South Dakota State, and yet they're still favored here. Uh, which way do you go? Uh, I go with Iowa State. First, Iowa State, they got a great coach, man. I mean, of course, Iowa has a great coach. He's probably the, a guy who's been there maybe longer than any, any other D1 coach. Uh, but, but three and a half is a lot. And I watched a, a good bit of the South Carolina, I mean, South Carolina, South Dakota State game. They're pretty good. But, but I mean, they, they, they hold a lot of teams. They're not, they're not a bad team. Don't get... Don't get me wrong. I'm in North Dakota State, but yeah, they have all these kind of all-world all teams. And, and some of those schools like that can be sneakily good. But Iowa State is is, is good. They're good. I think, I, th I think I like them as a dog on the road. Take the Cyclones with the points. And then our last college game to pick, uh, one of the first SEC conference games of the year, Kentucky at Florida. Florida, the big win over Utah last week. They're laying five and a half here. I, I think this is a trap game for Florida. First of all, they they played very well. Their quarterback played very well. He, uh, we know Billy Napier can coach. I mean, anybody that lives in Louisiana knows that. However, this is a classic situation where you have a big intersectional opener, and you got a team that this year, Kentucky last year, so too, so. Is punched way above Kentucky's weight, and they're pretty they're pretty damn good. And you know, Calipari started. He wanted a billion dollars for a new basketball arena, and said we're a basketball school. And you know, Stoops stepped in, and I, they, they got good locker room material, both from their own university and other people. But Kentucky's not bad. Don't don't get me wrong. You know, I've spent a lot of time in Kentucky, and I'm gonna tell you, like, if they win, Jeff Duncan will be sick. Because <laughs> he's Louisville to the core. And the Louisville people, you know, we think that no one hates like we do. Man, you don't know how the Louisville people hate Kentucky and the Michigan State people hate Michigan. It, it's pretty deep. <laughs> I'll, I'll add Missouri, Kansas to that list personally. So uh, that's, oh, that's another yeah. one. Oh, yeah. Even you know, now I was in Kansas. I spent a lot of time in Kansas these past couple of months, obviously. And uh, the, Let's just say Les Niles is not the most popular guy in the state of Kansas right now. He's got a lot of places where he's not all that popular anymore. Uh, so we are taking Kentucky, correct? Correct. We are taking Kentucky. Kentucky with the points there. Uh, we'll move on to the NFL. Saints open Sunday in Atlanta against the – speaking of hate, against the Falcons. Um, right. Falcons don't look very good, but this, this is a tricky way to open the season. A game you should win, but it's a road game. It's a division game. Uh, what do you make of it? Well, I, 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 I think the Saints are actually going to be pretty good this year. But in fact, I'm a homer. Uh, but, but you can sense that our defense is really going to be good. And, man, do we know something. A defense can carry you a long way in the NFL. And I'm not sure – I'm not sure Jameis is not ready to have a good year here. All right? We, we don't need a – you know, Drew Brees, Joe Barr, Josh Allen, Aaron Rodgers, top, whatever, that level of quarterback. But if, if Jameis can give us a, you know, seven on a scale of 10 or seven and a half, we're gonna, we're, we'll win double digits. 
Couple Three other times. NFL games to pick, James. Uh, we'll start Steelers and Bengals. Everybody's second favorite team in Louisiana, the Bengals. Speaking good. of good defenses, though, they got to face the Steelers, and it's Bengals minus six and a half. Yeah, I, 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 I like the Bengals to win, but the Steelers to cover. So I'm, I'm going to take that. That's a lot of points. And I, I, there's no, like, right, Bengals are my second favorite team. And Joe Barr is my favorite athlete, maybe, of all time. And, uh, but that, that's a lot of points to give the Steelers defense. All right, so we'll take the Steelers plus six and a half. Another good divisional matchup up in Minnesota. The Vikings are one and a half point home underdogs against the Packers. I don't – maybe it's a trap, but I like the Vikings. They're getting a point and a half at home, and they're pretty good. And, you know, you talk about a you know rivalry, that's a pretty good rivalry. Uh, it's probably supplanted the Packers Bears because if Bears are so bad, who's a rival of them anymore? <laughs> they don't have much. That is absolutely that's true. A sad franchise. I mean, I don't know how you how do you screw something like that up? You know, the classic the Washington, franchise, the Washington, yeah. what, the, the Washington, whatever they call themselves. I, I've, I've never liked them. When I went there, you know, I've lived there for a long time. I never liked the the Redskins, I didn't like their own. I don't like their, I didn't like their mascot. I don't like their colors. I don't like their stadium. I still don't like them. <laughs> it's just, it's but not a very admirable franchise of the last 20 years. No, uh, I, I agree with that. And the Bears, the Bears are really just kind of inept, though. Um, yeah, we're on that I am inept for, remember we played them. Mary and I went to the game, it was like 2006. And, uh, we played them and uh, we lost. It was a pretty good game, you know. But, yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. And the final pick: Sunday night football. The Buccaneers, the favorites in the NFC South. They're minus two and a half at the Cowboys. A couple of division champs from a year ago. I like the Cowboys here. Yeah. I mean, you, you got to believe they're going to be ready. And some of this stuff with Tom Brady is, frankly, kind of weird, don't you think? Oh, it is. That press conference was something else. And and because, you know, he's Tom Brady, you know, he's Babe Ruth. He can do what he wants. <laughs> you know, he's, I mean, yeah, he's LeBron. Just, what are you going to say? Nothing. <laughs> but taking that, off that, in the middle I of training camp. And... I, I, I wouldn't bet on but uh, There's just uh, there's something weird going on with that franchise. Uh, I've I, I, Yeah, that's, not, yeah. that's, a, that's just sticking my head in the answer. I don't, I don't know if I want to invest in this. But we'll, we'll, take, uh, we'll take the Cowboys and Grimace. So your picks in college, Alabama over Texas, Iowa State plus the three and a half over Iowa, Kentucky plus five and a half over Florida. Then in the NFL, we have the Steelers with the points, the Vikings with the points, and the Cowboys with the points. So the dogs are barking again. Yes, sir. And I could, I'll say this. You can't win them all until you win the first six. <laughs> That's correct. How about how about a bonus pick for tonight's NFL opener? Bills minus two and a half at the Rams. Who do you like there? Ah, I, that's about that. That doesn't seem like a, a terrible, a good value pick because the Rams are the Rams, and Aaron Donald is Aaron Donald. I mean, I, I that guy's worth a point and a half himself. All right, so I, I, I will pass. Be a gas, but I'm, I'm going to take it. We'll go to El Paso. All right. We'll, we'll like that. And it'll be the middle of the night where you are, so you won't be watching right. anyway and uh, see what happens in the morning. All right. Exactly. Like I say, you, you can't win a model until you win the first six. Let's go get them. Thank you, James. You bet, man. All right, James Carville. And that has been Cashing In with Carville for week one.